Let's get straight to the point. There is nothing that you can do to get into the moment with any form of consistency. There is no prescription. There is no breathing method. There is no meditation. There is no mindfulness. There is nothing in the world that exists ever, anywhere, on in any part of the planet that a human being can employ as some for, form of a doing or a prescription or a trick or a technique or a hack or a method, no matter how holy or how spiritual or how lauded it may be, it is not possible. This is yet another example of society leading people astray and also, quite frankly, another example of people seeking to be led astray. The moment is an otherworldly element only because a human being has been led elsewhere by his belief systems and his conditioning. And where he has been led is into the realms of the mind. The mind which tells him who, who he is. The mind which tells him what is right and what is wrong. The mind that tells him what he must do. And oftentimes what he must do in order to get out of the mind. You see, the mind doesn't care what you're doing, even if you're waging war with it. As long as you are doing something. Because as long as, long as it keeps you prescribing, and as long as it keeps you doing some form of an activity, it knows that it has you. So if you came to this solo podcast seeking to get into the moment, what I will tell you is something that is pure, honest, sincere, and truthful. If you leave this podcast with one truth, not as an intellectual form of learning, but as a realization that hits home. And perhaps it won't hit home today, and perhaps it may even age over the years. Um, perhaps you'll come to it by repeated failures of having arrived at the moment through the various different means that gurus and books in the spiritual community has tried to convince you of. That is this, it is impossible to prescribe your way into the moment with any form of regularity or consistency. Living in the moment is a complete impossibility by way of a bridge of prescription. Don't believe me. I will speak the truth. You can do with, with it what you like. Whenever there is an intermediary of prescription, the light is shined upon that intermediary. It never leads you. This is a bridge that goes nowhere. Then how about when a person does find the moment? Well, the person who finds the moment by accident, which is typically how it happens, he experiences the glory of the moment. And in that time, there are no thoughts and there are no feelings and there are no emotions. It's this feeling of great peace. Probably the greatest word to say is it's overwhelming peace. Everything is settled. There's a sense of floating almost that no matter what happened, it would be okay. But those things come very rarely, and when they come, and even when they come, they come and they go very quickly. So, so is it truly possible to arrive at the moment and live there? No. I have raised the question, and now I suppose I must answer it. Um, the answer is going to be anticlimactic, because the answer is going to be yes. 
but you will not hear that yes. You will not hear it without hoping for a prescription that might follow the word yes. In finding the moment, in living in the moment, uh, this arrives in what I call living in the cocoon of the moment. It arrives when someone truly desires it, genuinely and naturally, as opposed to viewing it as a success, as opposed to viewing it as a form of accomplishment. If it is a feather in the cap, it does not come. So the idea that I want to get into the moment often is a very reactive idea. Um, it is a, it's, it's reactive to a feeling which says that one should get into the moment. It's reactive to the idea that it's healthy, proper, correct, spiritual to get into the moment. Um, th those, don't, those sorts of ideas, they don't have any power to sustain anyone. They're full of fumes. The person who seeks the moment genuinely is the person who realizes that everything in his life leads nowhere. That behind every door is an empty room. And no matter what the promise may be, it's always an empty room. Inside every sealed box are more sealed boxes. And as each one of those sealed boxes is opened, they're always empty. As, and, no, and please don't believe that either. It would be foolish to believe me. The only things that you should believe are the things that don't require belief, and that is your own direct experiences. One might wonder why is it that one has not come to see that if they've opened a thousand empty boxes and they have all come, to, come up empty, and they have opened a thousand doors which promised many things, and yet when they opened every one of them, eventually they turned out to be um, empty rooms, then why would, not, why would one not come to the realization that all things in this life lead nowhere and all things in this life are anticlimactic? Well, the reason is, is because of hope. There is, there is a belief that is created by the mind which says, yes, 1,000 doors that you have opened have all led to empty rooms. I realize that. But what if 1,007 is the jackpot? And it is that very belief which keep, keeps one hooked. Then, even if that person opens 7,000 doors, which leave, leads to empty rooms, then there will always be that belief and that thought that 7,006 might be the jackpot. And if you stop now, if you abandon this hope at 7,000, then you might just forfeit that jackpot at 7,006 if you just would have stuck around a little bit longer. And this is how the mind leads human beings astray for their entire lives. But when one comes to see that all of the things that he had hoped for in this life, be it in his relationships with his family, his children, his successes, his failures, all of the things that he looked forward to in his life, all of the things that he thought would pan out and that wealth would make him, quote, happy, and that even happiness would make him happy. When one comes to the realization that he's finished, that he's done, that there really is no such thing as a full room behind a door. 
then one naturally begins to retreat from the worldly domain. And though he may still continue to live in the world, he lives above it. Because he has come to see that everything in the end is empty. That hope leads nowhere. And for the person who views this as negative and pessimistic, I have no words of consolation for you. All I can say is this isn't for you. There is no amount of convincing that will undo that belief from you. This is direct truth, which absolutely implores that you do not believe it. So the, the cocoon of the moment is a place that one arrives at where the possibility of it arises when one has no interest in any intermediary or prescription to get there because he realizes that any trick that gets him there will trick him right out of it. I do not for one second believe that anyone should be in the moment. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's spiritual. I don't think it's holy. I don't think it's healthy. If you have a choice, it isn't for you. But when one is in the moment, it isn't a source of pleasure. The cocoon of the moment is a place in which one naturally forgets himself. And no, it is not noble to forget oneself. All of these things are practical realizations. They are nothing related in any shape or form to shoulds or properness or correctness or spirituality or holiness. It is about a human being returning to becoming a human being. The one who seeks materialism in this world is no different than the one who seeks spiritual materialism. If one seeks a Ferrari and another person seeks a way to get into the moment, they are both materialistic people. And once again, in the same breath, is it wrong to be materialistic? There is no wrong. It is just that it leads to pain. It leads to frustration. If one enjoys pain and frustration, then one is free to do so. And I'm not being facetious. I'm being genuine. It is foolish to try to bring a human being out of his own miseries because the implicit belief is that the person wants to be re relieved of his miseries. There is great pleasure in misery because where there is misery, there is comfort, there is a sense of identity. It's home. So the moment has nothing to do with any sort of doing in order to get there. Buddhist monks are not in the moment. Zen disciples are not in the moment. They're too busy following their own cultural beliefs and rituals to get into the moment. The person who does a prescription or is looking for a way to get into the moment doesn't see the contradiction in that. The contradiction that is inherent in that is that a person cannot get into the moment because the moment only exists when the person disappears. There cannot be two. So how can you bring yourself into the moment when the very act of you bringing a you with you 
prevents the moment. If there was no you, there would be only the moment. There is nothing else. Now, what is the truth, regardless of whether you are ready for it or not, or you're ready to believe it or not, which you should not be ready to believe it? The, the truth is that the moment is all there really is. There is nothing else. Because the moment actually never goes away. It is the only thing that never dies. It is the only consistency. And reality is judged by that which never disappears. That is truth. So the moment, the cocoon of the moment, is for the person who was ready. Not ready to get a taste, or so that he can feel a dose of pleasure and come back and talk about how wonderful it felt. There's no difference between that and having a lollipop. These are for serious human beings, sincere human beings, who've come to the realization that no matter what they achieve in this life, in the end, it is nothing. And the one who achieves the moment, the one who is qualified to live in the moment, is the one who is ready to be nothing. Good night.